How to Achieve Freedom, Episode 3. Hello, this is Dan Shielding, and this is the podcast where freedom lovers explore and solve one specific question. That is, how can we achieve freedom? We cover practical, effective strategies to achieve freedom for yourself and for your loved ones and for establishing a truly free society based on the non-aggression principle. So let's get started. All right, it's been a while and I feel that I owe it to you, owe it to you to share what I've been up to. And I also am glad to say that I'm planning to deliver episodes more frequently. I've moved my entire family to a new home and I now have a space that's a lot more conducive to productivity. And I'm now recording in my car and that's what you're about to hear. So in this recording in my car, I'm sharing various things I've done recently in order to achieve freedom. It will hopefully show you that I practice what I preach and give you some insight into how I think as a freedom strategist, not only am I focused on determining ways to establish a free society and maintain a free society, I'm also interested in simple steps you can take every day to achieve more freedom in your life for you and your loved ones. So most everything I do each day is somehow related to that effort and I hope you find this inspiring. Just at, I just want to mention this. At the end of this recording, I'm going to review the most important strategies that I touched on, and I'm going to put them in context and add a few extra tips. So please don't miss the ending of this episode. That's where the real valuable meat exists. So what have I been up to? Here's the answer. Enjoy. The first thing I did over the last couple of months is I sold my condo. And I had a lot of equity kind of trapped into my condo. It was in a area, specifically Chicago, Illinois. And who knows, there might be some areas of Chicago that are in the process of gentrifying that might be in good investments. But I think overall, I just am not excited about investing in any real estate in Illinois, period. I just think, and especially Chicago, I just think that the two of them are horribly mismanaged and you're better off putting real estate investments somewhere else. So anyway, I sold my condo. It took me, uh, I don't know how long, let's see. I guess if you count when I was preparing to sell it and then selling it, it took me over six months, maybe seven months, eight months. And looking back, I think it would have been better for me to just hire a real estate agent that specialized in that process. I figured, hey, today, you know, we have social networking, we have new uh, websites that allow you to access potential customers all over the world. Um, I should be able to sell this thing. And, uh, but I do think because I tried to sell it myself as an amateur, it, it did take a lot longer than it had to. And I missed some investment opportunities because I wasn't able to access the cash that was trapped in my condo as equity. So I, long story short, I sold my condo and that has achieved more freedom in my life in a number of ways. Um, number one, it allowed me to free up that equity. So I had to have some liquid capital to invest in other things in order to live as I wish more effectively and to protect myself from aggression. And one thing I did along those lines is to purchase Bitcoin. I spent the last two weeks just because I finally had access to that, <laughs> that uh, money that was trapped in my condo. You know, there's, whenever you get a big check, there's always this waiting period and it's really aggravating, you know, <laughs> that you can't just use the money that belongs to you. But um, anyway, finally had access to that money and I invested in Bitcoin. And now is actually, it's not the best time in the history of Bitcoin, but it is a decent time because there was a recent goxing where because of some catastrophe that happened uh, related to Mount Gox, um, which is the, if you're not familiar, you know, one of the major online trading platforms. Of course, I just want to tell you guys, do not trust Mount Gox. This has happened multiple times uh, in Bitcoin's history where, and I, I myself, I lost a thousand US dollars that I had, I had 
put in Mt. Gox back when Bitcoin was like 10 or 20 bucks. And I was going to spend that thousand dollars on Bitcoin when it was 10 or 20 bucks. But because of the goxing that happened at that time, someone hacking into Mt. Gox, I, I lost a thousand dollars that I had sent over there. Never got it back as far as I can remember. And I think I would have remembered that. So anyway, a number of things have happened with Mt. Gox over the years. And just recently there was some bug. I mean, I don't want to talk too specifically about this because I'm not an expert, but somebody was taking advantage of the platform at Mt. Gox. And because of that, people were kind of desperate to get their Bitcoins out of Mt. Gox. And there was kind of a run on the bank, which caused the uh, price to plummet because everyone was trying to get out. The price of Bitcoin fell and now is kind of a good time to buy because I do predict that it'll go up again. And it's going up over the long term. It's an alternative to fiat money. The supply is limited. The Bitcoin community, um, the programmers involved, have proven themselves to be able to handle crises very well. So even though there is the slight possibility that Bitcoin's value could plummet to zero, I really doubt that will happen. I definitely feel more confident transferring my wealth from dollars to Bitcoin. Basically, it's a way of protecting myself from aggression because the aggressors in the government, they like us to use dollars so that they can keep printing dollars and giving those dollars to their buddies and in so doing, extracting our wealth through inflation. So by transferring your, your uh, wealth from dollars into Bitcoin, you are protecting yourself from inflation and protecting yourself from aggression. So what else am I doing? You know, health is always priority number one, health and just basic necessities like food, water, clothing, shelter. So the other thing I'm doing with that freed up cash is I'm scheduling checkups with my doctors um, and with specialists. I, I used to go to the family doctor because that's where my daughter went. And I just, I suppose I was too lazy to find another doctor. And I really, really liked that doctor. So I, I had seen her recently, but I really have to take health seriously. So I'm finding through referrals uh, specialists that deal with parts of my physiology that I would like to keep an eye on. So <clears throat> I'm spending my money on that. And once again, health is kind of the prerequisite to anything you want to achieve, including freedom so and happiness. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a couple of things I'm planning to use my cash for, which I haven't yet. One is to get a concealed carry permit. Now in Illinois and Chicago, this was a far-fetched dream for a lot of Liberty lovers because the people in charge in, in Chicago and Illinois, they really want you know everyone to be defenseless. And that's probably the number one reason, maybe that in the drug prohibition. Those are the main reasons that Chicago has such problems with violence. And I think it was in 2011, it had the highest per capita murder rate in the country. So, I don't know, the connection's clear to us, but <clears throat> now, because of a Supreme Court ruling, I can get an Illinois concealed carry permit. Now, do I think I should have to ask anyone for permission to just be prepared to defend myself, my loved ones, and innocent people from violent criminals who do exist in this world? Absolutely not. I don't think I should ask, have to ask anyone's permission. I don't think I should have to jump through any third party created hoops. But here's the thing. It is dangerous <laughs> to, to walk around <clears throat> where I live with a concealed carry weapon. If you don't have a concealed carry license, someone can spot it. You could print it accidentally. And by printing, I mean, you know, someone could see the silhouette of whatever weapon you're carrying, you know, against your shirt. I am a human and I make human errors. And so there is that potential. And if I or anyone gets caught with a concealed carry firearm, I think there's like a minimum of a year that I would have to serve. I mean, they really want to punish people for being responsible for their own lives. It's upside down as usual. So getting a concealed carry permit, I don't see it as something I should have to do according to justice, but I do believe it's an effective way to defend myself against the aggressors 
in the government that would love to lock me up for exercising my freedom. And in that, coming up with a strategy to defend yourself against aggressors is a way to achieve more freedom because the more you can uh, shield yourself from their actions, the more free you are, I believe. Uh, if you disagree, let me know. <laughs> so, and by the way, that does cost money. There's this required training and the license itself. These gun control advocates, they always design it to be difficult for people to go through. And it's a really a shame because the more difficult they make it for peaceful, innocent people to acquire defensive weapons, the more violence occurs. <laughs>